Well, good afternoon. This is your daily tarot card reading. Excuse me, from Born Without Boundaries Tarot. I'm having a little dinner slash lunch here. So I hope you can be patient with me. Um, I had a lot of stuff to do this morning. Uh, had two, two doctor's appointments and one for kids is one for me. It's just been a lot of running around. And I've been getting some food all set up for Thanksgiving. What's up, guys? Starting to, I bought my turkey, bought a small turkey this year because only my son and I will be here. Um, I guess mommy loves you. Yeah, mommy loves you. She's not going to share that food, though. Um, had to get my optometry appointment. <laughs> What's up, T? Um, hi. So, yeah, I just been a little, but, but it's not too late. Um, my teeth are all messed up, too. I'm trying something called... Um, well, let's see, it's, it's candid. It's one of these like um, through the mail uh, um, dental things too. So two things, I'm thinking of getting LASIK surgery on my eyes. So I'm gonna get do, uh, I'm doing a preliminary exam. They decide whether or not you're, you're, you can uh, after the exam, so that's important. And then I'm gonna think of, consider doing this like to get my teeth straightened. Cause you can see my bottom teeth are all messed up and they keep getting more messed up and that's because I had braces before I had uh, my wisdom teeth came in I had my braces in high school my wisdom teeth came in when I was in my early 20s so um, I had to get my wisdom teeth pulled and by the time they were pulled my top teeth stayed nice my bottom teeth got all jacked up so we'll see if they can help me I did LASIKs last year and the best decision ever. Really, Jessica? That is really good to know. And I was actually really impressed to know that they do a preliminary exam to determine whether or not they can actually help you. They don't just take anybody in off the street. They make sure that it's actually, you're right for it. Because there's this sort of something about your cornea has to be a thickness, like thick enough for them to scrape enough off of it. And the higher levels... People with me who have high levels of like myopia and I have like a, a high prescription, you have to scrape more and more layers off. So it has to be the thickness of your cornea has to be relative to um, the, the layer of your eye, like how, how much, how many layers you're going to need to scratch off. But it hurts right after for at least a day. Best just to sleep for 12 to 24 hours. Okay. All right. Thanks, Jessica. I appreciate that. So I'm going to go ahead and see um, if, if that's, you know, even viable for me and, you know, if I can afford it because, you know, insurance doesn't cover this. But it's something that I've thought about um, on and off uh, throughout the years. And I'm, you know, I know that they have financing plans. You don't have to pay it all up front. So we'll see. We'll see. Um, the tooth be prepared, but you will love it. Really? So you don't wear glasses at all anymore? You don't like you don't wear contacts at all anymore. I did the financing. Good. I mean, because you have to, right? <laughs> we just have to do it. Um, so you don't need any kind of glasses or anything. She told me because I'm getting older. I'm 43, and I don't mind my age at all. I love my age. Um, that's really cool. Um, and I actually love my glasses. I love my glasses. <laughs> like I geek out when I'm in my glasses. But contacts, I have a love hate relationship with. They're perpetually irritating and and um you know I have the contacts that I have now and I you know I'm, I'm really good with them actually I'm very happy with them but ultimately it's just become <clears throat> like well if I could get this permanently fixed why don't I I've had the exact same prescription for at least 20 years of my life at least 20 years my vision hasn't changed and that tells me that you know I mean my eyes aren't going to change after I get the Lasix either, you know, different vision altogether though. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Different vision. Can you, can you go into it a little bit more or it's hard to explain perfect vision and I'm expecting to use them for reading one day. Uh, see, that's what she said to me, like reading, I may still need like readers for, but you can buy at CVS for two bucks because it helps with distance vision, but it doesn't help with close-up vision and reading versus distance, right? It doesn't help with, with like close-up. And as you get older, that's what I was saying, I'm 43. 
as you get older, it's a little bit, um, the, the close up stuff gets tough and, and Lasix doesn't help that. Um, and, but you know, that's a really easy fix cause you don't even need prescriptions for that. Like those readers that you can buy at any store. And honestly, I think they're super cute. <laughs> I think that's my Libra rising. Some shit I just think is really super cute. And there, did you, did your vision change at all after having your son? Nope, not at all. I know mine did like crazy. I never needed glasses before. Oh, wow. No, my, my, my vision hasn't changed for that many years. I just don't remember. Oh, 37 today. Happy birthday. No, my vision didn't change after my son. Libra rising. What's up? Libra rising's in the house. Yeah, we've been feeling it, man. Um, did your vision? No, no. Thank God, right? I mean, I'm very happy about that. But my vision hasn't changed for years. My, my vision has been the same. So that's good for LASIKs. That's, that's reassuring. Um, I probably could have considered it 10 years ago, but 10 years ago I was broke. So at least now I have a steady income. Um, so we'll see. Anyway, welcome. This is your uh, daily tarot card reading for all zodiac signs. Um, that's uh, Scorpio, Cancer, Pisces, Taurus, uh, Virgo, Capricorn, Libra, Gemini, Aquarius, Sagittarius, Leo, Aries. All 12 zodiac signs. It's for you, right? It's for the people who are drawn to be here. Um, it's a daily energy reading. And um, I hope, you know, that you can relate to it. If you're watching this on Astrology Motivation, please make sure to subscribe to the channel and then ring that bell and select all notifications so you know when I upload your favorite content. Um, beyond that, let's, let's get into the reading. Today is Thursday. The moon is solidly in Taurus. Um, the color of the day is green and it is a day of planting. Now, the full moon is going to happen early in the morning. And I mean, if you're on the west coast of the United States, it's going to happen at midnight, around midnight, 1 a.m. If you're on the east coast, that's around 3, 4 a.m. So if you want to stay up late, you should get a beautiful view. This is an, a lunar eclipse. It's a partial eclipse, not a full eclipse. It's a partial eclipse, but it's the longest partial eclipse in 500 years, which means it's going to stay. It's going to last the longest. So hopefully y'all, you will all get to see it to some degree or another. And eclipses bring about, of course, great change. Um, yeah, uh, hold on. I, I just want to eat. <laughs> um, I don't know that there's much to say about that. that there's a lot to say about it, but where to begin? Um, anyway, my point really was simply that I'm probably going to do my ritual tonight um, and then, um, you certainly can do it tomorrow or Saturday too. Um, so this eclipse, I, I feel like in some ways it's almost like the clash of the Titans. There's going to be a lot of, and there is in the sky right now, there's been a clash all year between Saturn and Uranus. I just feel like there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of stuff that needs to change. And if it hasn't changed, it will <laughs> kind of thing, <laughs> you know? And I think that it's like, you can either go lightly. It, it You can either, this energy can either be nice to you because you go along with it or it can be harsh on you. And I know that's very general because it's true for a lot of energies, really pretty much true for all energies. But this is kind of what it is right now. This is, this is maybe you've been, been through it before, right? Maybe you've experienced it before. Thank God needs some of your hard ass truth. Oh, all right. Well, we're going to get deeper into that. <laughs> uh, it's really interesting what maybe what the cards have to say today. Um, I'm eating a Buddha bowl, like a pesto bowl. It's good for me. It's good. Hmm.
the morning moon. Hmm. Wonder what it's morning. I don't know. Remember that we discussed sweeping yourself with besom, a feather, or another item you can use as a cleaning ritual tool. Brush yourself off and give yourself a cleansing while bathing in the moonlight as a step toward balance. <laughs> All right. All right. Hold on. Sunday is when the sun enters Sagittarius. I'm distracted. I'm just being honest with you. I'm, I'm distracted because I'm eating. Um, all right. Let's get into tarot. What's up, Marby? Do I need to bring? What do I need to bring in this new moon? It's not a new moon, babe. It's a full moon. <laughs> it's a full moon, but it has plenty of power. Oh. We have some sort of celebration or togetherness or maybe something that you were happy about mm, what's this i don't know um you know this could be in some ways share this with somebody maybe have a get together do a combined ritual like or uh, invite friends over this could be that could be what it's saying energies for today these cards are flipping a lot what is the energy for today Well, there's some alone time going on a spirit quest. This is Virgo energy. Also, healing. Justice is decided. Now, this is, God, this, guys, this is major arcana. So, it's going to be decided outside of your hands. It's not like anything you can change. And then we have um, healing of abundance or healing of whatever is uh, keeping you broke, keeping you poor, um, money troubles being over. And this is um, feelings, having, maybe having feelings or focused on feelings, focused on what you're feeling. Oh, it's almost like owning your own emotions when she has her back turned to you. Um, putting everything into something. This is Cancerian energy moving forward. This is the central energy. Wow. This, I did read somewhere that this eclipse, this moon, this full moon, is going to be toughest on the fixed signs. But this whole year has been toughest on the fixed signs. So this kind of is the culmination of the shit hitting the fan kind of thing. Okay, so we have Cancerian's energy moving forward. Oh, wow. We have divine counterparts here. We have, ironically... The Queen of Cups facing away from us and the King of Cups facing toward us. But the King of Cups facing toward us is still very hidden. Um, there's some sort of some sort of information coming in. Probably through email or text or DM. Um, oh, something that you did not give up on. That's the Seven of Wands. And this is something that you've really wanted. A truth. 
Truth coming in. Now, I'm trying to remember the weekly astrology forecast. I just posted it for the 17th. Um, I'm sorry, for the 18th. I posted it. I think I posted it last night. I try to post it the night before so that people in India can get it because I had requests and I understand. Okay, it's about time you let this shit go. It's about time something was let go or released. Maybe you've been waiting for something to be released. So what is that? What have we been waiting for? What have we been waiting for? It, it is something that we definitely want. Something that we were denied or we haven't been able to let go of, right? Something that we lost. Um, something that we've been maybe too hard focused on. But it's saying that the thing that's going to help you focus or turn around or finally let go, it's coming in. It's coming in. And this is a new passion moving forward. Um, yeah, something that will take you into the future. A new interest. Could be a new interest, if you know what I mean. <laughs> This is Sagittarius energy. Um, it's taken a while. It's taken some time. This is finding a way to make things work. Could also be a new beginning. So what is this? Who's coming in, man? Oh, opportunity. Whoa, I love that. I'll take it. Opportunity is what's coming in. Perhaps there are lots of different options. Ooh, let's review. Three of Cups, happiness, abundance, get 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 together, celebration, um, people, chilling with people, chilling with people that you like and then spending time alone or just, you know, having faith. This is, these are two major arcana, kind of healing and then there's judgment that's passed. I gotta say, um, we have the five of pentacles in reverse, which we definitely want. In reverse, we have the queen of cups, which is just abundance, giving, abundance of giving, giving just to give for the sake of giving, unconditional. This is Cancerian energy, basically being able to move on. This is our central energy. So this is us being able to finally move on, maybe from somebody who has just kind of like not returned our affections or shown affections or the two of these are like, the two of these are divine counterparts though. And they're looking at each other. It's almost like they can see what each other is feeling. It doesn't matter if the rest of the world can't. And then we have the five of cups. But on this side, remember, it's almost like reminding us that there's something growing here. You know, he may be focused on what was lost, but there's a beauty right behind him. Right? It's almost like waking up to the possibilities. Something is growing in its place. Um, something that you think you lost, a perceived loss, which in the 3D world could be an actual loss, has opened up something beautiful. Um, there's some sort of letter coming in, a letter, note, email saying, hey, let's talk. Uh, something that you kept fighting for or that you didn't give up on. This is, this is bada bing, bada boom. It's almost like Sagittarius sees this. this could happen up till Sunday too. Because remember, we're switching into Sagittarius. This is, um, and this is Aquarius too. I just feel like there's a, a shift, a shift in desires here. I think we were waiting. We were hung up. We were about either about to walk away or we did walk away. Or we were waiting for somebody else to walk away. I'm telling you right now, they do. Passions are changing. They're looking for new opportunities. Or we're looking for new opportunities. Okay. What kind of new opportunities are you looking for? Because the new opportunities are here. They're coming in. And you know what? Sometimes... That's the best way to get over something that you couldn't stop thinking of. It's for a new opportunity to come in. To like help you remember. Because sometimes we get really stuck on an opportunity. Because we think, oh, that's the only one available to us. Maybe it's the only one that's been available for a while. But then we realize, oh, guess what? There are actually so fucking much. Many things. 
that I actually have an interest in or that actually want to come in for me. And it makes all the difference. It kind of makes your heart heal faster, <laughs> right? When it has another place to focus on. What other wisdom do you want to share? What the hell is this? You are good enough. So something happened up in here a little bit in the past that made you feel like you weren't good enough. Or maybe somebody decided that you weren't good enough and that they didn't want your ass, right? You didn't get that job. You didn't get that person. Um, so ultimately, this is something, almost something remembered. Something that you, that sat on your heart. Something that you learned maybe a little too deeply. But look at the bigger picture. Look at the bigger picture. What does that mean? That means that when you look at the small, tiny details that Virgo's, Virgo's obsess over, that Virgo energy obsesses over, you start to think, oh, I'm, you know, I'm the most unfortunate person at all. I, I'm not good enough, blah, blah, blah. But if you look at the bigger picture, that Sagittarius kind of energy of just like look at everything in general, you'll start to see things from a completely different perspective and you'll start to feel a lot luckier. So the plurality is where we find our abundance now, not the details. No place like home is here. Okay. So either you're going somewhere, maybe you're going home, home for the holidays. I don't know. Or time to go. Maybe it's time to go home. Somebody's going home. Somebody's going home. Or somebody's coming home. And I say that because there's some sort of clarity around this happening. There's some sort of clarity that this creates or brings by somebody coming home or going home. Solar plexus. Okay, what have you got on your what have you what have you kind of got? I'm gonna say on your chest, on your diaphragm, like what, this is your energy center, right? It's your powerhouse. It's the fuel pump for your energy. You know, it's a kind of like all that grinding fuel coming up and then push, this is what pushes it out into the, the world, right? So this is almost like your energy center or something has been sit like kind of sitting on your chest. Something has been sitting on somebody's chest. And I think only when you look at tiny details, do you see yourself as the loser of this thing? Material harvest is falling right there. It fell right in my lap. <laughs> so ultimately, this perceived loss is actually not a loss at all. It is part of an overall victory, which is interesting, but, or you can use it as one. And it could just have been how you held yourself. How you behaved, how people saw how you behaved when you thought you lost, right? That could have been the test. You think you lost. I want to see how this person responds, right? I want to see. I want to, I want to check this, this shit out, you know? I, I'm going to look to see how people behave when they're all on their own, when they think nobody's watching because somebody's always watching, right? I want to see. That's where the judgment is going to be made, and that's where the rewards are going to be passed. Hi, Amber. How you conducted yourself, how you, you conducted yourself when nobody was looking, right? That's the point. Self-worth, yeah. We have, it's a little compromise. Once again, it's falling right on this card of you are good enough. You're not feeling good enough. You're not feeling good enough. You have a compromised sense of self-worth. And maybe that's why you held something back. You held it on your chest. You didn't, you didn't say anything, right? Maybe that's why. But in the future, a little bit, remember this is only 24-hour period, the golden path within, which is you can only answer this with your heart. You can only find the way through this with your heart. So it's like your heart, your kindness, you know, what, where is your heart leading you? Where, are you? where is your heart guiding you? Trust your heart in this situation. Okay. And this is where we're doing. We're following our heart. Oh, I like this reading so far. You know, it's because it's got a purity to it. 
Yeah, something once again um, kind of lets you down. Uh, this isn't a terrible energy when it's in reverse. It's just kind of like nothing fun is happening. You know, it's like nothing bad is happening, but it's almost like mm, something exciting ceases to happen or doesn't happen. Or it's almost like, you know, when, when school gets a snow day, everybody's happy. But when that show or movie that you were looking forward to gets closed down for snow, everybody's pissed. Even though the truth is you still have the same amount of time to yourself. You still have the same amount of time to sleep in. You still have the same amount of time to, you still have the same amount of time to watch your favorite TV shows. If it's something that you were looking forward to, you're like, wah, wah. but ultimately nothing bad has happened. So you still got the same time. And that's what looking at things from a bigger perspective is about, right? That larger perspective of, okay, so Something didn't go the way that you wanted it to go, but nothing bad has actually happened to you. You're still safe, safe and happy and healthy at home, right? And now you have time to do stuff, right? That you didn't think that you would have this time on your hands. So how do now do you use your time? Universe is sitting there watching. Does this motherfucker tantrum like a goddamn brat? Waste eight hours of their day deciding to be miserable because they couldn't do what they wanted to do? Or does this motherfucker pick up the pieces and like get back on with their life and find wonderful things to do. Like think, think back to the disappointment that you experienced, whatever it was, and then think back to how you handled it and what you put your mind on instead. And that's what the universe was watching. Like how, how, how you reacted and what you put your mind on instead. In some ways, that could have been why the universe kind of made you thought you wanted the other thing to begin with. Because it was actually trying to lead you back around to just making time in your life for what was really for you. Because you weren't making the time for yourself. See? Universe is smarter than you. It just is. Hmm. It's been around a lot longer. <laughs> um, hmm. It has a larger perspective. Now, everyone wants to know why Sag is such generalists. Well, they're ruled by Jupiter, right? And ultimately, Jupiter is... God, kind of, you know, like the sense of the higher perspective, the sense of the everything, the omniscient. And when you see things through that perspective, they don't seem so dim because you're able to see all the possibilities. And the only way that humans have access to this perspective is through God, whatever you interpret God as. I don't care what pronoun you use. I don't care if it's plural or singular. I don't, I don't care if it's science. There's just a sense of whatever you connect to the higher perspective through helps you to see beyond your disappointments because you realize it's, it's, it's so small. There's so many opportunities. And that's why usually Sagittarians are blessed with this wonderful sense of optimism. Because if one thing doesn't work out, they're just on to the fucking next thing. Because they always have this link through Jupiter to the higher perspective. The sense of, yeah, okay, oh shit, that didn't work out. Mm, oh, but what about this? Because this could work out. And that's why they always seem so lucky. They're not really lucky. They are lucky. They're lucky for their perspective, which keeps them optimistic. Because when you are so connected to your God space, you can remain optimistic. Even in the worst times. Yes, even in the worst times, you can remain optimistic because you can see that, you know, you can see the forest for the trees, right? And vice versa. You, you have the ability to see... Um, that there's other stuff going on outside of your pain. That there's other stuff that's going on that, you know, even when you're sad, other people are happy. And there's joy everywhere, even if it's not necessarily in your house right now. 
And to be reminded of that will bring you back to this sense of joy in yourself. Even when you're going through the darkest times. And it's that perspective, if we can all link into it, and hopefully Sagittarius season will help us. If, if we can all link into that, then we can kind of, it's almost like in some weird way, uh, okay, let's see, you find out a person that you really like is dating somebody else, but for some weird reason, you can't be happy, you can't help but be happy that they're happy. I mean, you're just like, because you're sad, but simultaneously you're like, oh, happiness is awesome. It's that kind of shit that actually keeps you vibrating at a level of, well, you're definitely going to get something good happen to you. Because, you know, one side of the world is in night, the other side of the world is in day. You know, and it's that, it's that Jupiterian perspective that has set up those sundials and set up those uh, solar panels on each side, you know? And it's just like, well, if it's dark here, it's going to be light over there. I'm just going to, I'm just going to set it up in both places, <laughs> you know? It's that kind of energy that we're kind of like coming on and learning the power of, right? Right now. Now, this is, it's just, it's, it's just really important. All I'm saying, it's just really important to kind of focus on that. Um, hold on a second. I want to see, I can't think I can see this. It doesn't really tell us here. Ugh. It doesn't tell me when the nodes change. Because the nodes are changing soon. I think it's in January. Um, <coughs> yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, it's, it's when, it's basically the north and south node now are, north, is, north node is in Gemini and uh, south node is in Sagittarius. And so... That kind of like pluralist understanding. 11 p.m. in Scotland. Hi, Scotland. Thank you for even joining me this late at night. Bless you. Bless you for joining me this late at night. I didn't realize. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, eight hours, dude. Wow. Eight hours. Oh, I understand why. Because I was raised on the East Coast. And Scotland and England never seemed that far ahead from the East Coast because it was five hours. But over here, you add the extra three, and that's like a full work day. <laughs> I was just like, I'm like, wow. Wow. And I was thinking of going because I, I want to plan a visit to visit my friend. He just had a baby. And he lives in Cambridge, um, England, not Massachusetts. So I was like, I've never flown that far before to get to England. England's kind of a easy trip actually from New York. It's not very far at all. Um, but that's not going to be the case from San Diego, is it? But yeah, I mean, this is a sense of like, Oh, wait for important information. This, Oh, I want to, I want to show you these guys. Let me, let me come out. Um, mountain, stand your ground, stand your ground. So you know what? Let me say this. You didn't, you didn't wimp out. There's nothing for you to be, uh, um, like ashamed of. You tried your hardest. You tried your best. You know, you did everything that you possibly could. You stood your ground. You know, it's important. It's important to understand something. Um, it's important to understand that it is possible to do your absolute best and still lose. Because sometimes it's not even based on whether or not your best was good. Because sometimes your best is awesome. It's just not what somebody's looking for. But I learned when I was acting, when I was doing a lot of auditioning, that, and I learned this lesson very, very well, that it is important for you to do your best in every room that you walk into because you may not get that role, but if you really impress somebody, they'll remember your name. And I've gotten a part like that because they remembered me when I came back in a second time and they had been impressed with me the first time, I just didn't fit the role, right? And they were like, you were here before and they remembered me. So it's really fucking important. And I remember it was, God, what the fuck is his name? Richard Dreyfus, who said that. He's like, I think it was, I think it was him. I don't want to misquote him, but I think it was him. He was like, I really, he, he fit, I'm paraphrasing. He's like, I figured out that my job in the audition was not to get the part. 
My job in that audition room was to make the casting directors remember me. So, I mean, because that's actually, if you think about it, it's a lot more powerful than getting that part. Because those casting directors are casting all the motherfucking time. Right? And they have access to a hell of a lot more than one part. So it's a lot better to go in. And I'm not talking about like he's like brown nosing, kissing ass. That's not what he's saying. You blow them out of the water. And even if they can't cast you, oh, they will remember you. Because, thank you, Maya Angelou. Is it Maya Angelou who said people don't remember how... Um, what is it? What is that quote? People may remember, we don't remember something, something. They remember how you make them feel. Oh, they, re they don't remember what you say. They don't remember what you do. They remember how you make them feel. So if you have put a feeling into somebody and you've made them feel a, a certain, 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 they will, you, you will have made an impression because emotional memories last forever. Like these memories, they come and go and they get really, ugh. But emotional memories last so, they last forever. So if you can make an emotional impact on somebody by really doing your best, and that sometimes means that you're not the best in the room, but your enthusiasm and the fucking joy you feel. Like, bada bing, bada boom, man. You may not have been the prettiest person there. And all you're thinking is, oh, well, then that's that's all they saw. I was I, Somebody else was better looking or whatever. But not if, not if you were like easy to talk to and, and they loved laughing with you and they were comfortable around you and they didn't have to impress, but at the same time you kept them on their toes. Like all those things stick in somebody's brain because it's a feeling that you put in them. And so they relate that feeling to you. They relate that good feeling to you. And that's so much more powerful than did I get this specific thing. And that's what this is talking about. Look at that bigger picture. What is the larger impression that you made? It's not about getting this one thing, winning this one deal, getting this one job, getting this one part. It's not about that. It's about... What is the larger impression that you have made on somebody? Because that's actually kind of what's coming through now. And what's going to really be working in your favor right now. And that also has to do with keep your fucking head up. Be the best of yourself in every situation. Don't walk out a spoiled brat fucking loser scratching up people's cars being pissed. What, like, why? Hold your head up high. Make the room laugh. Right? They're going to they're gonna remember how you make them feel. And that is kind of what is happening right now. People will remember how you made them feel. People, somebody is remembering how you made a motherfucker feel. And they may not have been fast to express that. But it's there. It's there. And it's about to come through for you. And that's not why you did it. You didn't do it as a payoff. You didn't do it to get something. Or you did do it to get something and what you were aiming at, you, you didn't get. But you left an impression beyond that. And it had to do with your spirit and your heart, right? And making somebody feel at home and comfortable. So I'm telling you, something's about to come through, boo. That you think you lost. You didn't fucking lose. You were just aiming at the wrong goddamn target. But that's okay. Because if you were not aiming at the wrong target, you would have never hit this one. And I told you the universe is smarter than your ass. The universe will basically make you aim at the wrong thing to hit the mark they want you to hit. Knowing that you're limited and you may not be able to see that mark they want you to hit. But they're going to get you in that room by giving you that lure or that bait. Not, not to trap you, but to get you in the room. If, that you, sometimes you can't even comprehend that, that target beyond what you want, right? You, you're not even capable yet. But the universe is like, but that bitch got to be in this room. So we're going to put something enticing so she can't, she can't help. She gonna keep, she's going to, this is like Michelle. We're going to put that motherfucking chocolate cake in the room. <laughs> Sitting on the lap of that motherfucker, you know they never called you back. 
right? And we're gonna we're gonna put have him sitting on that chair that we know you've wanted to buy every time you go into Home Goods, but it's five hundred dollars and you can't justify it. <laughs> We're gonna we're gonna put it there, and you're gonna try your best. You're gonna try your best, and it's still not gonna hit that target. But you know what? It's gonna hit exactly what we wanted it to hit, because that motherfucker that's supposed to see you was in the room at that time, and you charmed the shit out of that motherfucker. And they got your name, and they found out how to get in touch with you, and they like chocolate cake too. It's that kind of thing. It's that kind of energy. Now, I'm not saying that's the exact scenario. But I'm saying it's that kind of thing that's happening. And <laughs> you just got to trust right now. You just got to trust. I feel nurtured is here. But it's in reverse. So there's something missing. It's, it's saying, I will rejoice even though I feel like something is missing. Because you know why? You're going to be in that good mood and that high vibration. And whatever is missing, you're going to draw in. That space will be feel, filled. I'm not trying to say pretend you're not disappointed. Oh, look, I'm so happy I didn't get what I want. No, that's not what I'm trying to say. Right? That, no, be real about it. You know, we're disappointed when we don't get what we want. Especially if we put our all into it, right? We done busted our ass. We put ourselves out there. We make ourselves vulnerable. That's difficult. And you got to kind of like be like give yourself a pat on the back because that teaches you something too. That teaches you hard work. That teaches you discipline. That teaches you to keep reaching. That teaches you to be driven. Failure is only a failure if you don't learn something from it. If you learn something from it, it was a lesson and it's going to propel you forward. Now, there is an empty space here. Maybe you feel a little bit lacking something. Okay, you lost. You feel right now you lost. But I want to still be joyous about all the things that I do have. Not about what I lost. I'm not going to celebrate being a loser. I'm going to celebrate, but you know what? I still got my motherfucking health. I didn't need the goddamn chocolate cake anyway. My living room is crowded as it is, so fuck that chair. You know what I'm saying? It's like... I can, there's still, so I got my beautiful dog. I love you. I do. I got, you know, like start vibing at that point of, I am not going to be focused on what I didn't get. You know, honor yourself and let yourself cry about it, but walk and cry at the same time. Keep on going, keep on moving and let what drives you be the stuff that you, cause just because you didn't win doesn't mean you don't have a lot of great shit going on. Right? And let that place sit empty. Right? Because the universe needed you to make room for something. Okay. Okay, universe. I'll make room for it. Maybe you, you know, you never would have made room or it never would have come in if the room hadn't been built. The room was built for what you thought was something else. Guess what? You're going to have another guest. Do you want the universe intended for you? And that's that bigger picture. And that's that faith. I got to have faith. I got to stay connected. Um, we have enlightenment. Ah, pursue spiritual growth. This is beautiful energy. And then we have unicorn. Invite serendipity. What were we just talking about? Invite serendipity. Invite the universe to align for you. To align it for you. And then dove. Take a leap of faith. I just said these three things. When we connect to God and our God space, you know, the higher power, we invite it to lead us where it can see we should be, that serendipity, and bring us together with what is supposed to come together for us. And then we have this. We have take a leap of faith. Just jump, jump on something. You, you may not know it. You may not understand it, but you believe it. You believe it. And this is that golden path within, right? Only your heart can really guide you in this. All right. It's like, it's like I have said this a thousand times. I'll use it a thousand times more. J.K. Rowling hit the nail on the head in so many ways. 
But that Felix Felicius, uh, Fe Felicius, however you pronounce it, was one of the best metaphors she ever created. It was just like, that's what luck is, is being in tune with those universal strands of truth. And it will take you exactly where you need to be so you're there at the right time. It may seem and feel ridiculous to the brain, to the ego. You know, you had Ron and Hermione standing around Harry after he drank the potion. Don't go there, go here. And he's like, no, no, I'm going to go here. I need to see Hagrid. And they're like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah. And that's kind of what it is. It's like, it's like something that makes you just get, lock in with what is in tune and being in tune, right? And just like, just trusting and letting it, letting it, letting it lead you. You know, it wasn't about those fucking memories from Slughorn that he needed just falling in his lap was like a lottery win, right? It was where all those steps he needed to take to lead him to get where he needed to get. And that is the beautiful part about that metaphor. It was just such an exceptional metaphor for how, how it works and how it looks when you tune into God. Because God is working through the 3D. You know, he's working into it, kind of leading you through it. So it's not about just, bam, the pot of gold landing in your lap. It's about giving you the map or being your GPS system to the pot of gold. And you got, because you've got to keep trusting and having faith along the way. And what that potion did was just open him up to faith. And there was no blockage in the faith. He was like, immediately, he was like, like being driven by faith and nothing else. And without all those crazy voices in your head getting, getting in the way, look what you can make happen. And we call that luck. And it's really alignment. No, wait, postpone, pause, say no. This was the only card that came out. I don't know what this means, but wait, postpone, pause. You want to know why? You done did enough. You don't have to do shit anymore. Can you just please wait for the next step to be told to you? Don't try to, it's not a decision here. The voice will come through here. It's just not going to come through here. So hold up. Wait. Wait. Wait for important information. You can't make this happen. And don't go looking for it because it's going to lead to disappointment because of expectation. Wait. Because that waiting shows that you have trust. And the universe is watching, man. The universe is watching. Wellness. Now we started off with that Virgo energy in reverse. Wellness. The recovery of health and wellness is here. Oh, thanks, Michelle. Amber, I'll put this up. It's always on IGTV. And I'll always put it up on um, Astrology Motivation if you want to go back and watch. Okay. So we have, bam, heart and soul. When making your decision, I love you guys. When making your decision, take into account what your heart and soul are saying. Sometimes the mind can deceive us Right? Just picking up on those wrong tunes. It's like mixed messages in, in, in the radio reception. Choose through love, not fear. And it's not to say the noggin is bad. It's good. The intellect is exceptional. Come on, man. Of course. That's why we have it. We're supposed to use our brains, but we're not supposed to use it to excess. And we're not supposed to use it to quiet our heart and soul. And this is that sense of like, your heart has to lead you here right now. Because, I don't know, guys, I gotta check. I don't know what the, the charts say today. Uh, Mercury and Uranus might be out of opposition by this point. But, like, it had fucked things up. It had fucked 
thinking and communication and even technology up. It really fucked it up. <laughs> it's like when the two motherfuckers that you depend on to handle a certain part of your machine start arguing and they're just totally letting their, their work slip and you're just like, we're going down, Scotty. Can you hear me? You know, like, can you help? You know, that's kind of what it is. That's kind of what it was. But it's okay. I think they're out of that right now. I think. I don't know. Because I don't have the charts. And I'll tell you why I get confused. Because I'm always doing the... Um, I'm doing... Because I'm right now, I'm working on the weekly astrology forecast for next week. Which I'll film tomorrow and upload tomorrow. But what's in my mind now is what's happening next week. And I forget what's happening today. And I've got to start to check um, overthinker here. And that's a big fucking problem. Is we overthink shit and so that's like quiet your brain quiet your brain because it's your heart that's going to guide you right now achievement take a little time to reflect on what you have achieved it is often easy to forget where you started and how far you've come honor and be grateful for this extraordinary journey that is your life I love you guys. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey. I will definitely, I will definitely see you soon. I'll see you here tomorrow. Um, astrology, uh, the weekly astrology forecast will be up tomorrow on astrology motivation here. Um, I hope you guys got to see Aries, Taurus, and Gemini because all of them were off the hook. I don't know what's going on with YouTube. Like they're not getting the views that they usually get. I don't know what's going on, but ultimately I don't give a fuck. They were off the hook and they were all really wonderful, powerful messages. So go watch those. And Cancer, Leo, Virgo, you're on deck for tomorrow. You're welcome. I appreciate you. And uh, I'll see you hopefully, guys, on here tomorrow around the same time. Probably earlier. Hopefully earlier. Bye.